What's up, Algebra 2 students? Um, we're going to do the homework uh, over the new thing, E, uh, exponent. E, number that naturally occurs in math when you use infinity a lot. It's important to be able to find it in your calculator, first of all. In, um, in 84, you'll find it over the division symbol. You might find it over this LN button, but you got to put it on one, and you get 2.71828. It occurs naturally when we are talking about like compounding interest and compounding infinitely times. Um, we'll start with uh, these problems that really just help you practice your exponents and realize that you know E is just a number, and the exponent rules that we've used before uh, will apply to E. What's great about E is that since it is a number, you can like check E cubed times, it's gonna be a big number, but it's fine, times E to the fifth. And I'm gonna get E to the eighth. So that's one benefit to, instead of X, you have a number to a power, is like you can check this, okay? Um, other exponent rules, remember when you are dividing, you subtract. Wherever we have more of is where we're going to leave. I'm going to cancel nine x's with nine of these x's, leaving one x. So it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to cancel nine of these e's with nine of these e's, leaving one e in the denominator. And then with numbers like 11 over 22, you just simplify the fraction. This is something where you don't use a rule. You just do like the normal division. So I don't uh, you know, divide nine by 10, I subtract, but I do divide 11 and 22 and I get one half. So I'd have one over two E. Same thing here, after canceling four E's, subtract four E's from here, I get three E's. So I am dividing, but when you divide, you like cancel things to powers. When you have numbers, numbers can be divided. 27 divided by three can be nine or nine over one. Remember a power to a power, x squared three times, x squared, x squared, x squared is x cubed, uh, x to the sixth. We multiply the two numbers. So I have e to the seven x to the fourth. I would multiply seven x and four together. Now what's seven x times four? Well, it's just 28 x. If you wanted to do it, you could do um, e to the seven x four times and then add up all the seven X's. Don't forget that numbers to powers, you don't use a rule, you just find what the number to the power is, normal, 625. Same deal, four cubed, e to the negative two X cubed. For an exponent rule, multiply. For numbers to exponents, just do it. 64, negative 2x times 3. Let's think about that. Negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x. Okay, fractional powers, a one-third. It's still a power to a power. So 8 to the one-third you could type into your calculator and get 2, but you would not type e to the 12x to the one-third into your calculator. Instead, you would just do e to the 4x or 12 times a third. If I got multiple things being multiplied, like x squared, x cubed, x to the y, you would add all these things together. But I can add the two and the three, I get five. But I can't add y to five, and it's not gonna be five y's. That's kind of what's going on here. I can add x and negative six x, and I get negative five x, and then add the eight to that. Same thing here, it's not multiplication. When you're multiplying, exponents get added. So this is x plus four plus x plus three, which is two x plus seven. Uh, that would be the simplified, okay? Now that's just like practice review, but 
the biggest thing that we're going to get into is is using this for like compounding interest and for values where things are compounded continuously. And the graph of y equals a times e to the rt. But we'll get there. Um, what's wrong? They didn't square 4. It should be 16. What's wrong here? Uh, negative 2 x's. Like, this is a tricky one. Uh, if it was like x to the 5th over x to the negative 2nd, you would write that as x to the 5th times x to the positive 2nd. So you'd add those, or you'd subtract a negative. So you should be adding these. And you should be e to the 7x. All right, but let's get to the graphs, the graphs, the graphs, the graphs. Okay. What do we notice about e to the x, or a times e to the x? e to the x, exponentially growing. The multiplier is e. Initial value changes where we start, but we're multiplying every single time by e. Now, to make this a decay, you don't change e to be like negative. You don't do that. It, it, that doesn't work. It gets real, real funky real fast. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. See, that gets real funky real fast. Um, what we do is to make it a decay, the rate ends up popping up to the exponent. So E is the multiplier, but it's like E to the rate that is the multiplier. So E to the negative X is a decay e to the positive x is a growth. So this is a little bit different than we're used to, but it's kind of like what uh, I like to teach where you know r being the growth rate, if r is positive, we're growing. If r is negative, we decay. And if we just always use an initial one plus r to the x, then like if r is negative, you would do initial one plus plus negative r to the x, and, and you can see like that negative uh, rate gives me a decay. It's gonna be the same thing here, only it'll be like 5e to the negative 0.5x. Okay, uh, so that's new to some if you've been using one plus r and one minus r. If you think of R as being positive or negative, then you're good. So we know these are growth. This is going to be a decay. This is going to be a decay. This is going to be a growth. For this guy, the initial value is 1. So I'm looking for a 1 and a growth. I don't have to graph this, but obviously you can use Desmos to graph this and check. Here, my initial value is 4. So I'm looking for initial value of 4 and a decay. Uh, so this is going to be B, initial value of 4, negative uh, rate, decay. Another negative rate, decay. Uh, initial value is 1, but we're decaying. So boom, that's A. Uh, Rate is positive, we're growing. There's no negative rate. So positive rate, but initial value of 0.75. There it is right there, so that's C, okay? Now, um, what we find is that if we split up the rate that's given to you on a yearly basis into smaller rates more times, the more you split up the incrementally more you get, it doesn't keep going on and you'll get more and more and more. Um, it slows down until if you split up your rate an infinite amount of times and you are given that rate infinitely many times, uh, it ends up going to E. So all I'm trying to say is like, we have this equation. But if I say I'm not going to give you this annual interest once, I'm going to give you this annual interest an amount of times over the years. Like let's think about quarterly. That means if I have 0.025%, I will give you a quarter of that every time. So I start with $10,000 and I will give you this quarter 
2.5% uh, interest four times, so split into quarters. Now, each year, I'm giving you this four times. So I need to do four times the years. Uh, so this is the whole add an NX or add an NT. Uh, after seven years, how much do we have? Well, we can either graph this or plug in seven, and that's that. Now, what happens if n goes to infinity, if n goes to infinity, this gets adjusted to this formula, where e, this magical number, pops up. And in this situation, I have $10,000. My rate is 0 0.025 times x. We don't have to worry about splitting it up, but it's like um, if I plugged in infinity here, this e pops up and the r pops up into the exponent. I'm trying to figure out why it pops up into the exponent, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let's just graph these. That way we can compare them. So many of my students are having such a tough time changing their axis. It's like such an important thing. 1 plus 0 0.025 split into fourths to the, I'll give you four of these per year. I need to see 10,000. So I'm going to bump my Y's up to, I don't know, 40,000. Cool. After seven years, you can either plug in seven or after seven years, you get $11,905. But if you were compounding this continuously, so I give you 0 0.025 divided by infinity, so that small decimal, but an infinite amount of times, Oops, should be a positive. This is what I get. Now you can see it's like almost the same amount, but we'll get a little bit more with the green one than the red one. 11,912 when plugging in seven. You can do this also in your calculator, plugging in seven. I get 11,912.462 for this one. And for the other one, I get 11.905. You see, it's like not that much more, but it is more getting smaller amounts of your percentage, but more times a year. How much better is one versus the other? I don't know, just subtract a little. Yes. All right, so you and your friend each have accounts that earn interest compounded continuously. Congrats to you guys. Use your friend's graph to see your friend's account over time. My money is that. Which account you or your friends is a greater principal? Principal just means the initial. That's when we use like P instead of I or instead of A. I don't know why we changed the form. So my buddy started with 4,000. I'm starting with 3,900. So my buddy. After 14 years, my buddy's got like a little more than $9,000. Let's see. His is growing at 5%. No, his is growing at some amount that I don't know. Mine is growing at 5% continuously per year. Compounded continuously. Um... I don't know, why don't we just plug in 14 in this time instead of uh, graphing. So 3,900 times E to the 0 0.05 times 14. Uh, my buddy's winning. I only get 7,800. Oh, after six months. That's so silly. Um, six months is a half of a year. 
So, after half of a year. Not 14 years, but a half of a year. Three, nine, 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 eight. You can also do this in Desmos and X equals 0. 0.5, and then six years. Five two six four point four four or four five. Let me show you those same answers in Desmos. Um, we got thirty nine hundred. Point five to the x yep after half of a year I have 3998 just like I expected and after six years plugging in six five two six four okay so the same answer is just different ways one ring account reach 8,000. You can use uh, second plus 712 and find the intersection, but I uh, like to do Desmos. We're going to do Desmos for our project. When my Y value is $8,000, what is the point on my graph? Right here, hide the X. Use one equation at a time. So many people who are doing both just have no idea what they're looking at. Right there, X is 14.396, X is years, Y is an amount, 8,000, so 14.360. I'll show you how to do it in the other one. The other way would be to graph Y equals 3,900 E to the 0 0.05 x or t. I'm also going to graph 8,000. I'm going to go from negative one years to 30 years. We're talking about years, so let's not go from thousands to thousands. doesn't make sense to go thousands of years down the road. And then I'm going to press zoom fit. Zoom fit. Fits your graph nicely. So you can see all the points that you want to see between those two x values. This intersection is what we're paying attention to. 14.369. Cool. All right, you can use Desmos, but again, we're going to think of R. If it's positive, it's a growth. R, that's negative, is a decay. This is consistent if you think of this being your formula for compounding interest or compounding things or an exponential function, initial times your multiplier to the x. If a growth rate is positive, this is bigger than one, we're growing. If your growth rate is negative, if you're decreasing, this will be less than one. When your multiplier is less than one, you're shrinking, okay? So I see r is negative three, so this is why I know it's a decay. I'm starting out with seven. I'm gonna have this shape over here. Now if you use your arms, as we go to the left, we're going up. As we go to the right, we're not going up or down, we're going flat towards zero. As we go to the left, we go up. As we go to the right, we're going towards zero. It's the same as other exponential equations. You can plug in any um, x and you'll get positive y's. You won't touch zero, you'll approach zero. For the other situation, I can see R is 0.15. Since that's a positive value, it's a growth. You might think that it's like, oh, if this was 0.15, 1 plus R, then it's a decay. But it's the fact that like in that situation, R would be negative 0.85. The initial value is three. 
Since it's a growth, we have this situation, this situation to the left, we're going towards zero, to the right, we're going up. Positive wise, you're never gonna touch, but you'll get close to zero, okay? Uh, most important thing was uh, this guy. That guy. Like graphing an exponential function and then finding points on it. That's what you're going to be doing on your project. This is also a good comparison. You know, um, quarterly compound getting a quarter of 2.5% four times or getting an infinitesimal of 2.5% infinite times. Boom, you get this, you get this, a little bit more. All right, uh, that's it. Later.